Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about HBAR. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, HBAR is the native token of the Hedera Hashgraph network. And it was one of the biggest winners of the election day trade. Really from election day until the local high, up over 800% to the upside. Very impressive move. But since that local high, we've spent some time correcting and consolidating. And now what we really care about is what's next. This is now in the past. That 800% move is now over. We have missed our opportunity to catch that. But is there opportunity for more upside to come? So what I want to do is look at some of our models, see what they're saying about where HBAR stands right now. Do we need to spend more time consolidating or correcting? Or is there possibility for continuation in the near term? Let's go ahead and get into it. But first, if you want to get live data from our models and more, you can go over to our website, PolarityDigital.io. And if you sign up for our Polarity Digital Pro plan, you get live access to our model data for HBAR, Bitcoin, and a bunch of different altcoins and more. So if you're interested, check it out. Link in the description. Okay, so the first model I want to talk about is our Trend Confidence Indicator, or TCI. So I've talked about this model before. The way that you want to interpret it is how is the TCI, that's this orange line here, how is it moving in relation to price. If you see the TCI start to move up aggressively, then price will often follow. And then vice versa, starts moving down aggressively, that tends to be moments where price will show weakness, either consolidation or having to correct. And with this big explosive move, you see the TCI got very high, not surprising. This was very clearly an uptrend and this model was just confirming that that's exactly what was happening. But then as we got up to that local high, you see it reverse very aggressively to the downside and that suggested that some weakness was in store some pain some correction was coming and really with this model what i'm going to be looking for is do we see a reversal happen can we get a point where we start seeing the tci move up and then price can then follow it up as well we haven't seen that happen yet and especially if we get to a point where maybe we see price moving down but the tci start moving up that would be a bullish divergence that can often then lead into a nice appreciation in price so we're not there yet but this is one of the things that i'm going to be watching on that shorter term time scale to see when should we start getting more hopeful of a resumption of the rally so far that has not materialized so it suggests that this consolidation might need to last a bit longer before we're able to make that move up but of course i'll be revising that position based on what the tci does if next week if next month we see this start going up aggressively i'll be updating accordingly this is how I like to navigate markets. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, much less six months from now. But if you just react to what the data are telling you, then it gives you actionable information. That's the way that I like to navigate the market. That's why I'm going to be continuing to keep my eye on things like the TCI, because it will tell me, just like it told me up here, that we're likely due for some weakness. It'll also likely tell us when we're due for some strength once again. So not financial advice. You should make your own opinions. But that's what I'm seeing when I look at this particular model. Now, another one I want to talk about is our momentum bias indicator or MBI. So this model cares about momentum as the name suggests. And really is momentum biased to the upside, dominating to the upside where any moves down are quickly bought up and then you move up higher? Or is it dominating to the downside like in bear markets where just aggressive negative momentum that you attempt to reestablish positive momentum and it just gets rejected and you move right back down? So we see where we are right now is we kind of came out of this reaccumulation phase. When you look at the MBI and you see it doing what it did all the way through here, kind of chopping around zero, kind of oscillating around zero, that is very characteristic of moving out of a bear market into a new bull market. And so what I think we've seen here is the first kind of beginning opening shots of the new bull market, kind of like we saw maybe back over here or possibly over here. The first big move into very high positive momentum territory. In fact, this is the biggest, strongest burst of momentum that uh, HBAR has actually ever seen from this model's perspective. But you oftentimes see more than one. And so it could be that we either we even just stay in the green like we did in this part and then have the next leg up relatively soon. Or we move up, we have to go back down to the red for a bit and then have that next second leg. But I do think it's likely that that will come. This is kind of the first big opening shot, in my view, and more is to come. And you don't see this outside of bull markets, right? You don't see these moves up to the really high green, except for in bull markets. So that is a very good sign. Doesn't mean that we can't correct longer. And in fact, 
wouldn't surprise me if this has to come back down. Like I said, it actually maybe even retest the red back here before reversing to the upside. But certainly it suggests that we're still in a good spot. It's just that we might not be able to see those returns immediately. And I know that can make some people angry. They want to just hear that the asset is immediately going to go a thousand percent to the upside. They don't want to hear that more correction or consolidation might be necessary. But the reality is that that's actually often healthy. It's actually often healthy to give the market time to digest a massive repricing that can then set the stage for another big explosive move to the upside. If you go up too fast, too quickly, you risk just blowing out all the possible upside you have for that cycle really early on, and then the asset really underperforming expectations later on. So I actually like to see HBAR really have some time where the market can digest what just happened. People who want to sell at these levels can, and then new buyers can step in who are then looking at much higher prices to sell. And then whenever that next big impulse comes into the market, you then have a healthier base, then a bunch of people who are already on the fence who might just pull the trigger and sell just a little bit above where it was. It gives basically time for the market to get used to this repricing and not just have people be really quick to sell maybe when we would just hit new all-time highs or things like that. So that's the thing I wanted to mention. Obviously not financial advice. You should make of this as you will, and you're free to, of course, have whatever opinions you want. Obviously, you should navigate the market the way you want to. But that's just one point I wanted to make that actually spending more time consolidating here, I actually think could be long-term good, bullish for where HBAR could ultimately end up this cycle versus if it just continued to go vertical. And it might've been really fun and impressive while it happened, but then it might just burn itself out at a lower ultimate price than if we have this time of reaccumulation, which could then set the stage for even higher prices later on. So the other models that we can look at that also tell us that some more consolidation might be coming here, at least in the shorter term or shorter to medium term, is our risk model. So I want to talk about here is our long-term upside down, so potential indicator or UDPI. So this model cares about risk over months to multiple months or moves that play out over months to multiple months. So it's not really concerned about really short-term volatility. It's more about the upside potential when you're looking at these longer, kind of more market cycle sweeping types of moves that you see with different assets. You see, it does a very good job of identifying these high risk points as well as these low risk points where accumulation has historically been very advantageous. So you'll see right now is this actually basically at the top of the scale. It is very high risk right now is the reading that it's giving HBAR. Now on the surface, that might look really concerning, although I would mention that last time we got to these levels, we did see a new all time high above that. And I don't think that this has to suggest that HBAR is near whatever its cycle top has to be right now. You see this with altcoins quite a bit, where they're capable of getting up to these really high risk levels within the middle of a cycle. But then because they're altcoins and they're more volatile, they, they tend to be a little bit more uh, reactive to moves than something like Bitcoin, which is a, a for crypto assets a bit more stable. You'll see risk be able to be a bit more quick to move. And so at some point, I will not be surprised to see this start falling down aggressively. Now, it hasn't started doing that yet. And that's what's really another piece of the puzzle here that makes you think we might need to spend more time consolidating right now. That we just came off this massive spike in momentum. We're seeing that there's not a sign of a renewed uptrend just yet on the TCI. We're seeing risk still being very elevated. I'd like to see HBAR continue to correct here, let risk cool off, accumulate more upside potential, then resume the move up. And again, that might not be a fun short-term thing to hear, but long-term, as I was just saying, I actually think this will be ultimately better for HBAR if that is the course it plots versus it just trying to shoot off to the upside immediately from here. I think if that happens, it'll be limited how far it could go before it has to kind of tap out. It might even have a big sell-off then at some point, and that's no fun either. So though it's not fun to think that HBAR might need to spend some more time consolidating, I actually think that's probably the more likely and more healthy route that we're gonna go in here. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna go for another half year or longer sideways. I do think that still Q1 this year is still probably going to be the time that if we get a full on parabolic phase of the bull market, that's where I'm gonna be looking. We'll see if Bitcoin leads the way first. What you might expect is Bitcoin to move first, maybe in some of the earlier months in Q1, then the alt season come and then assets like HBAR, which maybe has been kind of lagging behind at that point, to then start catching up. And so it's not like I'm saying that this is gonna be late this year or anything like that. I actually think that in the next few months we'll see something happen. But a lot can change in a month's time and especially even two months time. 
And it could be very possible to me, and I would not be surprised at all, if by that time we've seen things like, for example, long-term risk really cool off in a meaningful way, see momentum reset like we've seen in the past, getting ready for that next big burst. And then we start seeing trends start to reverse in a meaningful way to the upside. And ultimately that could be then be in service of a much higher HBAR price than if it just continued to go up immediately right now. Really, you want the market to be supporting the move. That's another piece here that's important to keep in mind. That Bitcoin, when it moves up aggressively, it creates a big hot ball of money that's getting ready then to rotate into altcoins and shoot them up. We saw that here. Bitcoin started moving up and then getting to all-time highs and then a lot of altcoins then followed along. That's what happens every single cycle. Bitcoin is the early mover, the first mover. And then after that happens, that's when altcoins then catch that bid. A lot of the money that people made, the profit off of things like Bitcoin, they then rotate it into other crypto assets to try to ride them up as well. I don't see any reason why I would expect different this time. And so that's where, if I'm looking at HBAR specifically, I think that we could just be in store for that kind of a, a behavior. Cooling off, correcting, ideally let Bitcoin run first, then let those profits roll into HBAR and send it up higher. All right, obviously none of what I've said here is financial advice. You should navigate the market as you see best fit and make of these data as you will. But that's what I'm seeing when I look across the market. And it might not be the most fun thing short term, but long term, I actually think it's the more healthy option for HBAR. All right, if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. A lot of updates for our models and more over there. And you can go to our website, PlurityDigital.io, to see live data for our models and more for HBAR and a bunch of other crypto assets.